Multivariable Calculus, Lesson 14.1. We are in a brand new chapter. And look at our learning targets at the top. I can find domains of functions of two variables. That's the big, big, big change that we're jumping in even today. We're going to see a function not of just one variable, but actually of two. Like you could have f of x comma y. We'll even get to functions of three variables and even see that today, believe it or not. And uh, we're also going to create level curves. Later on, we'll even uh, touch on level surfaces. But let's take a look at a definition. A function of two variables. It's a rule that assigns to each ordered pair of uh, real numbers, x, comma, y, in a set D, the domain, a unique real number denoted by f of x, comma, y. The D, the set D, is the domain of your function, and its range is the set of values that f takes on. So here we have uh, a couple of examples. It says for each of the following functions, evaluate f of 4, comma, 3. Well, we can do that very quickly right here. It's like plugging in the ordered pair x equals 4, y equals 3. And you can see very fast we'd get 4 plus 3 plus 1. Down below we'll have 4 squared uh, minus 1. And of course this is radical 8. 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 1 is 8. Down below uh, 4 squared is 16 and minus 1 you'd get 15. Uh, so... Uh, simplifying this, we would get 2 radical 2 all over 15. So what we've seen is you can have a function where you substitute in an ordered pair, actually an x and a y value, and get uh, an output, so to speak. By the way, in this regard, a lot of times the output will be considered to be z. Um, now your domain. Your domain gets to be uh, very much related to what we were doing in past algebra classes. Uh, our domain in the past when we worked with functions, we of course would say, well, we don't want to have negatives inside of square roots. That is still going to be the case. You won't have a real number if you have that. So in yellow here, we're going to say x plus y plus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. You must have uh, that inside part of the radical being non-negative. It can equal 0, uh, but of course we uh, could also have it being positive. As soon as it's negative, the square root of a negative is an imaginary number. It won't be a real number. Uh, likewise, down below, if you remember you can never divide by 0 and x squared minus 1 if we were to set that equal to 0 whether we solve by factoring or adding a 1 and then taking square roots uh, we'd see that x would not be able to equal a 1 or a negative 1. The 1 or the negative 1 would cause our denominator to be 0. So this is our domain and we could actually say this is our answer for our domain uh, we can have all different types of x comma y's plugged in, but x can never be a, a 1 or a negative 1. And uh, when you add x and y and add 1 to it, it must be greater than or equal to 0. Graphing, well, if I were to solve for y, in other words, subtract an x, simultaneously subtract a 1, if we were to graph or sketch this domain, we're looking at the domain being an xy plane, all possible points. And this thing right here, well, I think you can see pretty quickly, we'd have a y-intercept of negative 1. We'd have a slope uh, of uh, going down 1, right 1. Uh, we could also go up 1, left 1. And, uh, you know, without too much work, you would see that we'd actually have a line that would look like so. And y is greater than that. So, of course, what we'd really like to do is say, well, look, we're going to be shading above that. However, 
Don't forget, we also have this additional issue of x not equaling negative 1. So we could say, look, x coordinates of negative 1 or positive 1 would not be allowed. None of those ordered pairs on that ray right there, either of those two rays, would be allowed uh, because they'd cause a division by 0. So as we get to this second problem here, uh, of course, they're saying, first of all, can we find f of 4 comma 3? f of 4 comma 3, well, your x is a 4. This is natural log of 3 squared minus a 4. And 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. We'd have 4 natural log of 5. Uh, what we're seeing plain and simple is that you can plug in this ordered pair and get this z value, get this output. How about our domain? Uh, you might remember this is good basic algebra review. Uh, you know, when we're dealing with natural logs, natural logs honestly are so much like uh, the square root issue that we've been dealing with. The argument, what's inside, cannot be negative. In fact, it cannot be zero either. Uh, our domain, plain and simple, is to say y squared minus x is greater than 0. And you can even add an x uh, to both sides if you'd like. You could say here it is. y squared is greater than 0. That's your domain. Now, what would it look like? Well, uh, you might remember that when x is to the first power and y is to the second we still have a parabola, but this time our parabola opens sideways. And when y is positive, we are going to open towards the right. Uh, so you could very quickly begin to graph out a parabola. Now, by the way, to help you see that, I always like to review what I know your Algebra 2 teachers would have shown you anyway. Uh, y squared equals x, if you were to take your square roots here, plus or minus, you'd get y equals radical x, y equals negative radical x. y equals radical x is in our first quadrant, y equals negative x is in our uh, fourth quadrant down below. Well, we're going to shade though, and uh, you know, shading, you could definitely just check a random point, like 2 comma 0, and say, Hey, is this true? Would we be shading within, inside that uh, parabola? Well, if you had 0 squared, is that going to be greater than a 2? No way. That means don't shade by 2 comma 0. You could just as well have checked, uh, you know, a point like negative 1, 0. And if you did, you'd see that would be true. Uh, so this is what our domain looks like. Everything shaded. You can take any ordered pair that you'd like uh, in this shaded region. Don't take an ordered pair on the parabola or inside of the parabola, such as a point like 2, uh, comma 0. All right. Well, let's take a look at uh, this next example, last one on this front page. And it says, find the domain and the range in graph. And guys, we're going to see this so much, you very well could get started and just say that that g right there is another variable. It's z. It's going to be the z-axis that we've been working on in the past. So uh, let's talk about our domain. As we're looking at our domain, I think we'd all agree that when you see a square root, you'd say, hey, that inside of the square root must be greater than or equal to 0. So we could say 9 minus x squared minus y squared, that must be greater than or equal to 0. And uh, it would only take a moment if I added the uh, x squared and y squared over to this other side. And, you know, you could even, if you'd like, do a little bit of rearranging, you could say, let's put x squared plus y squared on the left, 9 on the right. You remember the mouth of the inequality, like a Pac-Man or an alligator, opens up towards 9. It still must. Uh, but you might wonder, well, what is that? That's the uh, formula, the uh, equation of a circle. 
it's a circle with a, a center at a zero zero and this is nine which is three squared remember if you had x squared plus y squared equals r squared uh, you know r would have to be a three so we can say one two three go three steps to the left we could go three steps up we could go three steps down and I'll tell you what we can go ahead and just get this circle but it's shaded inside if you plugged in zero zero it's going to be true what you're saying is hey if you want to plug something in to this function and get a real answer you can only uh, have x comma y's ordered pairs uh, that are coming from within that shaded circle there uh, case in point if you would have plugged in four comma zero you would see that your inside of the radical would be negative uh, now from here I just want to point out something to you we are asked to find the range also the range wow uh, the range is going to be really this z value and you begin to think well my goodness uh, what what could our z values go between well if uh, we would have chosen something on this border here like x equaling uh, 3 and y equaling 0 you can see that uh, inside you'd have 9 minus 3 squared is 9 minus 9 that's 0 in other words the inside of the square root could be 0 uh, but what if we took in the middle here the point zero zero uh, well then what we're subtracting would be as small as possible uh, that's actually going to just be radical nine so I hope it's clear that your outputs what's going to come out of uh, this range right here is in fact uh, values between zero and three uh, that square root, of course, uh, you know, can get inside. Uh, we, we could see that the largest number we're ever going to see is a 9, a meaning we're really not subtracting anything. So the square root of 9 is 3. Uh, that's really meaning that z is biggest there. And uh, likewise, if we would have gone to the border, uh, that square root goes down to 0. Uh, but let's keep punching this out here uh, you know if we had z is equal to this you might say what exactly does this surface look like what would this function look like as a graph guys if you were to square both sides you might remember that this sure does look like uh, the three-dimensional form of a circle which we call a sphere uh, so we've got z squared equals this and wow we'd have a center at zero 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 we'd have a radius of three but this is a hemisphere this is a hemisphere because z is the positive square root z cannot be something negative so if we wanted to graph this and it would only take a moment to graph it uh, we can see here's our x-axis, our y, and our z. And you can say, well, your x can go out to 3. We can go 3 steps this way at negative 3. Here's our y, 1, 2, 3 this way. We can go 1, 2, 3 over here. z is going to go 1, 2, 3 up this way. So as we graph this thing, maybe I'll even change colors to, to really make it uh, stand out. can see uh, what what's happening here we can say look we can go up high it would look like that we can come this way so you know and then if you wanted to you could even begin to draw a little arch right there you know so it, it is a some a hemisphere looks a little hard to, to draw in you can uh, make it dotted back that way to make it stand out a little bit all right well you know that's about all we've got time for that's page one of the notes we're gonna have to have a second video for uh, the second page and we'll pick that up immediately